Hey, Sean. Yes. So I just decided to just do audio. You just my fingers are getting tired just typing on the Instagram Messenger. Okay, okay. So why don't I send you a Zoom link and we talk there? Um, uh, I don't I'm know. Gonna... I just what? Well, okay, sure, sure, sure. Why not? Okay, I go mean, for it. Why is because we want some questions answered. I've got you. Okay. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thanks. Oh, okay. <gasps> Oops. Hi, Sean. Sorry. I'm just kind of camera shy. I don't know. Like, I've just been curious because you know how I'm like, all about, you see my post, you follow it. And, you know, I'm all about justice and stuff like that, right? Yes. And I was just curious. So, to be honest, I, you know, I haven't, I haven't really lot, listened to a lot of your videos. I just kind of tap, tap, tap just with engagement. But okay. I have to confess that. So, but recently I actually watched one of your posts and I was actually shocked about your story. I was just thinking like, what? I had no idea. Like, I mean, there's no judgment. I mean, I'm all about justice and everything, but I was just surprised to find out that like you were like in jail. Like, and if, I mean, I don't want to like, I don't want to like be like stereotyped or you know, stuff like that. But I'm just wondering, in my heart, I don't really think there's a God. And then you share something about God saving you and all that stuff. And I'm thinking, well, why would there be a God if God allows, like, suffering? And, like, you, with all people you should know. I mean, like, you know, why wouldn't God stop you from doing what you did? I, I'm just, I don't know. It's just kind so, of bothering me. I just want to know, like. So are you really asking that, God should stop bad things from happening. Should he stop good things from happening too? Mm, well, what do you mean by that? I've watched your recent posts and your mother's illness. Do you think God should have stopped your mother from getting sick? Yeah, for sure. So That's why you I say it. that. Why well, think about it like this. Not that God made your mother sick, but the fact that the post that you've posted since concerning the doctor, hearing about your faith, concerning you singing the happy songs to your mother, that has drawn many of your followers to see the victories and answer prayers that God does answer and he used your mother's illness. So many times we want God to stop us or stop bad things as we deem from happening. But a lot of times we don't think of the aspect of God is like a picture within a picture, meaning we see your mother's illness. That's the picture that we see here on earth. But there's a bigger picture, a universal, an eternal picture where God is at work drawing people through your mother's testimony to know that he not only heals, but he answers prayers. Yeah, but you know what? I don't really believe in God. You know that, right? Okay. I just do that because of people say that. I mean, it's no problem. God, I God kind of stop. believe in God. like, I kind of believe that we're gods ourselves, you know, like I'm into the whole, right. you can see like justice, love, love thing. Like we are all, you know, okay. I, I, I like the, when I say, when you see pray and stuff like that, like, yeah, I think my mom used to talk about it, but I didn't, um, I personally don't really believe it. You know, I just say that just to, you know, like. Okay. And that's not a problem. Let's talk about flying hippopotamuses. Huh? What's that? You've never seen a flying hippopotamus? No. What is that? Okay. What about a flying turtle? No. Where? No. Well, the this reason is a pretty I question. ask you that, <laughs> generally, people yeah. don't talk about things that are not real. Oh. And just the fact that you have these questions about a God that you don't believe in, you having the question and placing validity behind that question by saying other people say, you didn't say that about the flying hippopotamus. You didn't say that about the flying turtle. You automatically knew that's impossible, but you're sitting here on huh. Zoom asking me about a God you don't believe in. I'm telling you that there is a God, but if you don't believe that, then why even give it a second thought? Yeah, I guess that's true. And that's, I guess that's what's bothering me. I don't know it's I don't know what's considered bothering me, you know, but I was just inquisitive thinking about like 
like what happened to you like obviously did you know god before you did we did that whatever thing you did like i don't know the details but you know like i don't know it's up to you if you want to share it or not but i'll I'm, like, I'm happy to share what happened to you like why why did you know god then like what happened to you like i don't know i was like, not in a relationship with god meaning oh. did i know god did i believe in god yes but i thought the things of this world had more value than god meaning I've never questioned was that whether there was a God. I just thought that God was someone who made rules and regulations and I just didn't want to follow him. I just wanted to do what I wanted, when I wanted, how I wanted. And at first, as long as I wasn't hurting anybody else, I didn't see anything wrong with it. And I think most people are like that at some point in their life. We just want to say what we want, do what we want with who we want, as long as it doesn't hurt anybody. But what happened to me when I lived like that, suddenly it became, if somebody got hurt, I really didn't care. And the yeah. whole time I did believe there was a God, but I kept saying, that's not what I want. I want something else. And so that eventually led me to commit a crime. And when I committed the crime, I found myself trapped. And it wasn't that I was trapped behind bars, but I found myself trapped in the fact that my best thinking had landed me not only behind bars, but facing a life sentence. And so at that point, I resolved, because I believe I was a man with a strong mind, I resolved, well, I'll just take my punishment. But a funny thing happened. Along the way, my mother told me, you need to be a man. And I said, I am being a man. I'm not crying about the situation. I've done wrong. I feel bad about it, but I'll suffer my punishment. And she said, I'm not talking about the punishment that the state's giving you. I'm speaking about the woman you're going to marry. You need to let her go because you don't have the kind of life that is to her benefit. And I oh. said, Woo, I don't want to let her go. And the one time in my life as an adult that I listened to my mother, I realized that what she was saying was practically true. And that's what caused me to cry out to God and tell God, God, I really don't want to let this woman go. And the effects that it's having on the inside of me, I need you to fix it. And I don't know how you can fix it, but I know for the first time in my life, there's no amount of money and there's no other woman that I want in this world. And so if you fix it, I know you don't make deals, but if you fix my broken heart, I'll give you everything that I gave myself and more. Well, the reason that I know that there's a God is not because I heard a voice out the sky, but the next day I received a letter in the mail. And so for me to receive a letter in the mail, that means it was mailed previously. And all the individual told me, it was a young lady that I knew who had joined the Marines. And she said, hey, I'm back in town. I heard you were incarcerated. And I just want you to know that God is in control and he loves you. And I felt a snap. And when I felt that snap, I knew that something inside of me had broken. And what had broken were the bonds that I had with my former fiance. And since that time, I've not only known there is a God, I've experienced the love and the healing of that same God, and I've never turned back. That's kind of an amazing story there, Sean. Never well, heard a that. Lot of pain in that. Yeah. But so, there's a lot of healing. Hmm. I guess that's not a coincidence. I don't know. Should it be coincidence or what do you think? Like, I guess you don't think it's a coincidence, right? That you got that it letter. Can't, that's it can't be coincidence because using my intellect there's nothing exceptional about what that woman wrote me. She didn't say anything about love. She didn't say anything about a broke heart. She didn't say anything about prayer. That's how I knew when I felt that snap, there was oh. a supernatural force that just chose to use something as simple as a letter to do what I couldn't do with my natural mind. And that's why I have numerous questions often. God, why did you allow that? Or why did you allow this? But as I told you earlier, I believe that there's a picture within a picture with God. There's the picture that we see here on earth and that's just a small picture, but then there's a greater picture, an eternal picture, a picture that's forever. And as God orchestrates the events in this greater picture, this small picture of our life, we gain glimpses, we gain glimpses. And that's how people just say, I believe that God's gonna do it for me. And they're not doing that out of wishful thinking, they're doing that it. I've had a glimpse and I had a glimpse. I had a glimpse of hope. I didn't have a glimpse of hope because of something I'd done. I had a glimpse of hope because my mother and my grandmother prayed for me. And that's why I'm okay when you say that you don't believe in God, but I'll tell you this, 
life's experiences and trials will cause you to know that there's someone outside of yourself. And I'm telling you that that someone is Jesus. Yeah, it's something for me to think about, but I, mean, I just can't, like, you know, I'm just so part of this whole crazy justice thing, you know what I mean? And I just feel like if there was a, a real God out there and there was justice, and I don't understand, like, they're all this suffering. And there's this crazy pandemic we're going through right now. Like, why don't we just stop that? Like, okay. I, it's just, that's I would, something I would ask you hard this for question. me to, to, to think, yeah. Why wouldn't more people die? The same way that you're asking, why wouldn't God stop the pandemic? I'm asking you the question, why wouldn't the pandemic slaughter everybody in this world? The same way you see the deaths and the tragedies, I see the lives that were spared. I see the vaccines. I see the miracles. Oh. Once again, hmm. a picture within a picture. I'm not denying the hurt, but I'm asking you how much more people, how many more people could be hurt? How many more deaths could there have been? There's no reason that what we've experienced the last year, it easily could have knocked out 75% of the world. I don't have the numbers, but it didn't even come close to that. Now, I'm mindful of the people who passed away, but oftentimes, once again, the picture within the picture, when God allows certain things here, it's because he's doing something here. And if you don't believe that, whatever justice that you want for what you think is not right, often some of the best things that have ever occurred in this world have come out of tragedies. Look at how we mobilized when what happened in New Orleans. Look at how the world is mobilized against COVID. Look at how I'm in the state of Texas. They had a cold storm come through and neighbors who had lived in neighborhoods for decades who had not spoken to one another, was, they were cutting wood. They were helping one another with water. Oftentimes this momentary tragedy, although it is a tragedy, in the big picture, God works numerous miracles. I mean, I don't mean disrespect, Sean, but isn't that like humanity? I mean, like I'm all about love and helping and being kind. And that's what I would do too, but it doesn't mean like, I don't know, like if, if I see something I would give and, you know, like love and stuff, like I even put this hair where all the time, like strength and love, peace, you know, like, I mean, isn't that like we, it's just humanity, us helping one another. I mean, that's justice. Well, I, I would say this. How many people have you helped today? None. How many people <laughs> do you think need help today? I have no idea, Sean. I guess I reached out for you for a reason. I don't know. I have no idea. I'm just saying the questions that you're asking God, oftentimes when you speak of humanity, God does use us to answer the prayers and solve the problems of others. But I'll give you one small example of the difference between when God does it and when humanity does it. Okay. If I were to do something harmful towards you and then speak to you very disrespectful about it, how much would you want to help me? Get it. I would just, I would just block you. The God <laughs> that I believe in, the God that I believe in, people are disrespectful and hateful every day. And he doesn't love people who follow him any more than he loves people who hate him. Really? That's why I said I knew about God, but I didn't have a relationship with God. Trying to comprehend God in your intellect without experiencing him for yourself, you'll never accurately understand him. He's not someone who can be intellectually explained, but he is a spirit. He is love. But what that looks like is when you get involved in a relationship with him through his son, Jesus Christ, then what he does on the inside compels you not only to fall in love with him, but to experience love that you've never felt to where you won't just love the people you like, but you'll love all people because it's not a love that comes out of your, your humanity, but it comes out of your spirituality, your relationship with God. You have some pretty good valid points. But well, I've been hurt in many valid <laughs> ways. Uh, I have lots to think about now. And that's okay because the wonderful part about it is
this is not a pressure, pressure, pressure. If I had to leave you with one thing, whatever yeah. you consider God not doing, think of it as a picture within a picture. And I'll be praying for you. And hopefully God will give you glimpses of the big picture. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for sharing your story, by the way, about that whole jail thing. Like, I, I don't know. Yeah. How, how, maybe maybe we can do this a, a, another time again. Like, I would appreciate it. As I have some more not, questions. As long but... as I'm not at work, I have plenty of time for you. Not out of my humanity, but out of God's love in me. <laughs> okay. Thanks for taking the time, Sean. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. -bye. Bye.